Right, just killing about 30, 40 k's, well, probably a little bit more than that, um, up from Corn, and um, this is where we're heading, that's where, that's where we've started from. We're right here at Kanyaka Station, and we're heading up to Hawker, and then down to Craddock. Now, Kanyaka Station, look at it, it's in ruin. Um, phew, all these flies, 1851, some bloke took it over, um, I really should know his name, a Hugh uh, Proby. He started the, the, the lease here. Sadly though, um, in 1852, he died crossing a river, a flooded river, which is uh, quite ironic because um, these ruins pretty much come about through drought. Um, in 18, or the mid 1860s, um, there was a wicked drought um, from the guys that took over from, uh, was it Proby? And um, they lost 20,000 sheep so uh, a bit of a sad one. They came back uh, after 1867 and tried it again with some smaller um, plots. And basically uh, this became um, uh, Rick and Ruin. So uh, a great little spot. The other thing I should point out too is that we are following the old um, garn line that went from here up through to Unadatta. Um, but sadly, once again, because of the amount of floods that would come through here, you either got feast or famine. It's either no, no water for bloody ages, or then all of a sudden, nothing but water. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, the, the, the farm was 360 square miles. And this farm, I may add, it, when it was up and cranking there in the, uh, the early uh, 1850s, 70 people were here so we've got uh, men's um, quarters men's um, kitchen uh, we've got cart rooms we've got horse stables and then of course we've got probably the main homestead and things itself so absolutely awesome anyway we'll head further on up to hooker kanyaka station was a cattle and sheep station in the flinder rangers south australia located approximately 40 kilometers north northeast of corn where we just left from Kanyaka Station was established as a cattle station in February 1852 by Hugh Proby. Due to the Flinders Ranges been very dry country, so it is both tragic and ironic that on August 30, 1852, Proby drowned when he was swept from his horse crossing the swollen Willacra Creek while trying to herd a mob of cattle during a thunderstorm at the age of 24. He was buried the following day. His grave was marked with an engraved slab which was shipped from Britain by his brothers and sisters. I understand it weighed one and a half tons. Proby's Kanyaka and Mukra range holdings were sold to Alexander Grant. He and his brother, Frederick, settled on the Mukra range run, which they renamed Kunato. Under subsequent owners, and particularly under resident manager John Randall Phillips, Kanyaka Station grew in size until it was one of the largest in the district with 70 families living and working there. Because of the difficulties of transport, the station had to be very self-sufficient and Kanyaka Station grew to include a large homestead, cottages for workers, workshops, huts and sheds, mostly built from local stone due to limited supplies of workable local timber. The station switched from cattle to sheep, but had cows, pigs, and vegetable gardens to supply food for the residents. There was also a cemetery. Proby was not buried in the Kanyaka Cemetery, as it had not yet been established at the time of his death. Severe droughts resulted in massive losses of sheep and eventually the station was abandoned. Due to its stone construction, many of the buildings survive today as ruins and are a popular tourist attraction. The Kanyaka station ruins consist of two main historical sites. The first is the Wolst which was one of the largest in the state and provided room for 24 blade shearers who shore thousands of sheep in fairly confined shearing floors. The main building is the homestead which housed the manager, his family and servants. Some of the original stone wall which protected the gardens is still visible. The Great Northern Railway also ran parallel to Kanyaka Station, the raised roadbed of the old narrow gauge railway can still be seen today.
Right, just made it up the road from, uh, was it uh, Kanyaka Homestead Station? Now this recommendation in Hawker is one that I was given by the blokes from the Corn um, Pioneer Restoration Society. So thank you, I have made it to, I think it's Jeff Wilson, I'll touch base with that one, but he's a painter, an artist, and uh, I've made it into his little uh, display here, and it is absolutely stunning. You could swear that I'm basically, like if I was to get that all perfectly in perspective without any of the, uh, the cabin there, which I can't do, but you'd swear that you're standing at an, an, an outlook. So it's um, very lifelike, it's very, very good. So we'll walk around, um, I'm looking for the Willapina um, Pound. It's the one that we've got to go and have a look at, but uh, staggering scenes, really nice. This is a pretty cool scene. So it's all set up with a nice little railing and he's done all this nice little um, foreground of um, rocks and vegetation of, of a creek bed. As in it just disappears into the distance. And if you don't believe me, check out, <laughs> I'm in a shed. <laughs> and if painting isn't your thing, he's got a bunch of other things here to start with. He's got um, shell collections, rock collections as well lined up around here as well so it keeps your interest it's pretty awesome so this is the Willapina pound it's a 360 degree panorama of well I guess there's a, there's a viewing area from there so I think this is from the viewing area so it's absolutely incredible so the Wilhelmina Pound, apparently as history goes, there was a guy called Captain Starlight. And from what Jeff tells me, that he used to um, steal cattle or stock over on the east and he'd drive them over this way. And he would pop them into the pound, which was uh, surrounded by all these rocks and fatten them up, change the brands and send them off to market. This is history goes with Wilhelmina Pound, but it's a pretty amazing rock structure. So now I don't have to drive the motorhome into four wheel drive country to get to the viewing platform. I don't even have to walk up here. How cool is that? I've got the view. <laughs> Jeff's also got an incredible little dark room using some UV light. You turn it on and you can see some of the, uh, the minerals at night and how they react to the black light. Pretty awesome. Very pretty. Well, there you have it. Jeff Morgan Art Gallery. Incredible. So uh, if you ever get the chance to come here, make a point, that's at Hawkers, South Australia, make a point of coming here to the, uh, the gallery and see his fabulous start. It's going to be one of the best galleries I've seen for displaying model cars, cars, 
um, stones, rockwork, and all those paintings. It's absolutely incredible. Look it up.